conclude the items on our agenda, and we come to non-agenda speakers. And the first speaker is Sergio O'Neill. Sir, you have five minutes. Vice Mayor, members of council, and the citizens of Portsmouth. My name is Sergio Dion and I reside in Captain Banner section of this great city. Um, I just want to make an announcement about an event that is coming up. Um, the Virginia Organizing is a um, nonpartisan social justice um, network um, based in Charlottesville, which with a chapter here in Portsmouth and all over the um, state. They are hosting a dismantling racism workshop. It will be in August. Um, you have to register. You can go to the Virginia Organizing website to find out more information. Um, you can uh, call this number, 847-922-1213, um, and speak with the Portsmouth uh, Organizer, Megan, to get more information as well and to register. This is, an, this is a free event. However, you do have to register, and you will meet with uh, citizens and representatives from all over the state and other chapters and, you know, the work they have done to discuss race in their cities. And, you know, people of all different walks of life, how they come together and talk to each other and not at each other. Part of, and which leads me to my next point. We've spoken about race, some comments that were made by a council member. But let, let's go even further than that. We have a class issue here in this city. We have an issue where we have some that have looked down on those that don't. And those people, and the, the ones that have, are of both races. And some of the comments that they make are despicable and discouraging and, and hurtful to those that are struggling. And we have some people that use them as pawns in their election campaigns and go and visit when it's time to go get those votes, but any other time you hear them say, those people don't vote, we're not going out there. I want to know how many times do those people see them other than election time or other than when they're trying to get something in their favor. Let, let's be honest, I'm telling you right now, I see through the smoke and mirrors and I see through the games. I love all I love all my people here in Boston, I really do. I think you will, um, for our elected officials, you guys are trying, but let, let's not use one person as an example without holding others accountable as well. Because it will put the weight on one person, but turn the blind eye to the actions of others. And they go by unnoticed, or some people might think they go by unnoticed. See, people like me, who look at both sides of the fence, who pay attention to more than what some people think, who are listening to other people as well, we're not, we're not gonna play this game, you know? We keep, for some odd reason, you know, all the other cities around us, when you see us on the, when you see them on the news, they're talking about what's new coming to their city, what, you know, how they're growing, how they're expanding, you know, how big companies are targeting them for new headquarters. And then you get to Portsmouth, and all you hear about, oh, this person is racist, or, you know, th th this type of stuff. When do we change the perception of our city? And I can tell you one way to do that is for people to really start paying attention. Because some people will use the racial issue to match their own dirt. And, and let's start, let's not be blind to that. Because see, while they're throwing the kicking up dust in one way, they're doing stuff behind your back too. They might not tell you, but they are. And then you don't find out until it's too late. And then you say, oh, what happened? How did this happen? What did this come about? We have to get out the business of that. So if we're gonna play this game of using this issue to, to hide stuff, then guess what? Somebody has the, the microscope out. Somebody has their, their glasses on. I might not have mine on right now, but trust me, I, I wear them when it comes to certain issues. Because you guess what? We gotta start really examining stuff for what it really is. You know, a lot of times, my, you know, my friends that live in other cities, they say, I feel sorry for you for what's going on. That is an embarrassment to me. I, I feel like I'm constantly having to defend my own time. I do it until the day I die. But it shouldn't be, how can you put up with that? Why don't you move? What is going on? What? 
I mean, we're, we're the only city. We cannot be the same city that has had these same problems and still not doing nothing. We, we got to move forward from this. How do we expect to grow when we constantly have this kind of stuff always in the news? What big company, what big piece of economic development want to come here when we have this embarrassment going on and all the embarrassments that don't make the news but can very easily? So let's stop playing this game. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Sue Landon, and we have five minutes. Sue Landon, you have five minutes. She's followed by uh, John Erica. We'll take one speaker at a time. Hello, my name is John X. Aragona. I moved to Portsmouth about seven years ago. Uh, it's solely about Beach Music Awards salvation for the city of Portsmouth. The city of Portsmouth, mayor, the vice mayor, city manager, city council members, the city of Portsmouth has all the components at this very time to reinvent itself as a major niche tourist destination and home to artists, composers, and producers, as well as establish a very viable music and entertainment industry. Portsmouth can go from one of the poorest cities in the state to one of the wealthiest quicker than anyone can imagine. You cannot be successful marketing Portsmouth to the residents of Tidewater. All dynamic cities must have tourists to thrive. Locals don't stay in five star hotels, eat out every night at fine dining restaurants, nor do they buy memorabilia and souvenirs to take back home or support our celebrated museums because there's always tomorrow. Besides, locals are a one-shot deal. For visitors and the rest of America and throughout the world, there is no tomorrow. New Orleans would have shriveled up like a prune after Hurricane Katrina if not marketing its jazz and Dixieland music along with Mardi Gras and its world famous indigenous food. That's an absolute given. How many people think New Orleans could have made a comeback after Hurricane Katrina if it wasn't for their jazz music? The irony is that jazz doesn't even sell much. So why do their customers keep coming back? The answer is to have fun listening to their music and eating their food. The reasons are very obvious. A major bonus is you don't have to pay the money back. The same scenario could exist for Norfolk and Portsmouth, inasmuch as both cities have agreed to work together, the indigenous music and cuisine is undeniably some of the best music and food America ever made. Many local tunes were hits worldwide. Virginia is the fourth largest seafood producing state with the best variety of unique, exquisite recipes. We have fresh northern and southern fin, fi fin fish and the very best shellfish. We have talked to Tony Pinto, the general manager at the Renaissance Hotel, about televising beach music, TV specials, and market pay vacation packages throughout the world. Our music is the vehicle to market our area to five of the 7.5, 7.7 billion potential consumers on the planet. We have guaranteed worldwide distribution of all media, including TV, internet, social media, print material, and radio. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Sue Landman is listed to speak. Did you give up your time? No, uh, Reggie's not. I'm taking you in the order that you signed up. Oh, That's sorry. our policy. Sorry. 
my dear friend Mayor Rowe, distinguished panel, great citizens, of course, of Virginia. My name is Reggie Sands, a Portsmouth native and son of famous singer, recording artist Ida Sands of the Soul Duo and the world famous Platters. My father, Noah Biggs, was a legendary record producer and owner of Shittown Records on Church Street in Norfolk. I'm here to speak in behalf of Mr. Eric on this program. Over the course of my life, there is not one person that could come close to John Aragon when it comes to the ins and outs of music and television. He has no equal. John has been associated with the biggest names in the entertainment industry. He knows more about beach music and rhythm and blues than anybody in the Tidewater area. His reputation for first class beach music TV specials and events stretches from Atlanta, Myrtle Beach, Los Angeles, New York, and many more great cities. His resume includes such stars as Dionne Ward, Mary Wells, Frankie Avalon, Jerry Butler, Cuba Gooding Sr., The Drifters, Barry White, James Brown, and so many more. If he says we can turn Portsmouth into a vibrant niche tourist destination, you can take it to the bank. His connections are overwhelming, and I'm proud to call him my friend. I had the pleasure of staying at his house and ate the best Italian food known to man. Our friendship started over 30 years ago, and I'm learning his connections and awesome general knowledge. I am positive that John can make it happen for the city of Portsmouth. Norfolk was instrumental in producing classical R&B, soul pop, such stars as Dorothy Maynard, Jimmy Archer, Dickie Harrell, Charlie McClendon, Pat Curtis, Joanne Folletta, and Wayne Newton. Now I say to this distinguished uh, panel and the great city citizens of Portsmouth, if San Francisco can get millions of tourists to take a cold ferry ride to Alcatraz, then we can get millions of visitors to come take fun ferry rides to Portsmouth, Norfolk, and Hampton. In a meeting last year, the city manager of Hampton said they were in. Newport News recognized that it's a no-brainer. Both cities had a slew of famous artists, composers, and producers. The area's music came out of our inner core cities of Norfolk, Portland, Pampers, and Newport News, and was the roots of beach music. That is emphatically explained in the master plan, which was presented to you guys. All four cities need plenty of money, and this is the everyone's sure ticket to fame, wealth, and glory. My residence is Virginia Beach, Las Vegas. I have two pieces of property here in Portsmouth that I haven't even stepped foot on. I'm ready to come back to real live entertainment. When it comes to gambling, everyone comes to Vegas not just to gamble, but they come for the entertainment. Entertainment and sports unites everybody all over the planet. Doesn't matter what your persuasion is, your economic status, or anything else. Pharrell is in the music. Look what he did for the city of Virginia Beach. They generated millions of dollars over a period of three days. And this man possessed the knowledge and the whereabouts to bring it to this city of Portsmouth. And I would say humbly, let's make it happen. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
significant prizes for the winners, and the prizes are very high dollar. The Beach Music Awards marketing plan puts Portsmouth in the region on the world map. Old Town's high and side streets becomes the end place. The success of this venture will also allow us to construct a five-star theme hotel at the Old Holiday Inn site. The nicest <coughs> with a revolving sky lounge, unique theaters, unsurpassed restaurants, supper clubs, fresh seafood, and mouth-watering cuisine. It is your city duty and moral duty to preserve our indigenous music. No expensive infrastructure is required. It is already here and empty. Our citizens need to be educated about our musical history. All cities are doing a terrible job in preserving our homegrown music. Proposals have been written and handed out to several of you over the courses of years, and yet not a soul ever responds because no one reads the material we give you. If the powers that be work together, we can accomplish this epic positive change in the destiny of our area quicker than you can say jackrabbit. Our music is something to be proud of, and we are foolish not to showcase it to the world. It is a catalyst to thrust Portsmouth into the big time and a positive cash flow for all. How is it that Mayor, Vice Mayor Charles Whitehurst in 2013, he got it in a nanosecond and even asked to be Chief of Staff? <laughs> Jim Oliver, our former City Manager of Portsmouth, also got it right away. Then City Manager John Rowe had a meeting with, with uh, John Aragona and others and emphatically said, we are in. Fred Schoenfeld convinced John Aragona to please move to Portsmouth because he thought this sounded like a really good done deal. Do the powers that be expect us, at our committee, to do 100% of the work, supply the paper, ink, buying materials for business, plans, sponsorship, benefits, and TV syndication purposes? Then attend, untold, then attend untold meetings, go to office max, run around, told selling, sponsorships, networking, all of which cost money. We have the perfect plan to make Portsmouth one of the most beloved cities in the nation instead of the least desired. The city needs to chip in and help. We need a space to work. And even if it's just sweat equity, an official endorsement the Beach Music Awards project is what we are asking for. If Jim Oliver and Charles Pointers could understand it, then our current leaders should be able to do the same. It's a must to read the master plan. You're going to be receiving an email tomorrow morning with the speech material and also a book that you can look at, go through at your leisure, and you will be of getting the master plan for each of you in the very near future. Uh, do, not let me, do not let our music fall into obscurity. God save beach music when America needs it the most. Tony Pinto is ready to go to broadcast worldwide TV specials from the main ballroom. We are not a concert, but TV specials. The TV special never dies. They can be broadcast over and over throughout the world to billions of people and showcase Hampton Roads, Pine Water, or Coastal Virginia, many assets in a unique and positive manner. Thank you so much. Thank you, Can't you just see Chinese and the Jack Oriental people dancing the shag right now? Your time is up. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kent Rowe Devon. Man, we have five minutes. <coughs> Greetings, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'm here tonight on behalf of the comments that was made by one of the elected officials who is absent tonight, Councilman Moody. Mr. Rowe, I remember you made a comment about creating a race relations committee. The citizens of Portsmouth, the people of color, have lost confidence in this council. I'm here tonight to ask for an immediate resignation of the Moody and yourself, along with the visitors since. Because the comments that have been made from this council 
who is supposed to be elected to represent all bodies, all people, and every citizen in Portsmouth, even though there may be disagreements amongst us, it should not be made abroad. The statements that came from Councilman Simmons saying she deserved to be vice mayor because she was a white woman. I have no faith that your committee, if you do happen to form one, will be careful as to what they say, be mindful of the citizens that they represent, including the color of people. Moody has always shown his disdain for people of color by making comments such as, the people on the south side, their opinion does not matter when it comes to the budget because they don't pay bills, insinuating that because they are less they put less equality, they spend less in the city, that they don't have a voice. How can we respect a man like that and have him representing 55% of a city that's people of color? Lastly, I would like to know who in this room has no color? Where are the uncolored people? It is a very ignorant statement, totally racist. So yes, you said you would form a race committee. We have no confidence in you, Mr. Roth. Councilman Simmons, she made the statement that people can say whatever they want to say. How is that okay? How can this council form a committee to represent people of color with those type of comments being made? I would never tell someone I deserve a position because I'm a black woman. Never. And if I would, this whole city would light up about Contrail as a racist anyway. And she doesn't deserve it. There is a lack of confidence in the leadership of this council. And it's not just from people of color. It's from all people. I would never walk in a leadership position and make those type of comments. And if I had friends, who did that, I will check them, because that's what you do. Are we going back to the days where white people wouldn't accept black blood? Where are we going with this? How far will you go before you're saying enough is enough to your friend, even if they look like you? And no one stepped forward to say that comment was wrong. No one stepped forward to say, if I was a person of color, that would have offended me. And that's why we do not have change in the city of Portsmouth. However, the people are tired because enough is enough. We always say we're going to meet you at the pole, but there's a blue wave coming, and it's coming for me. Okay. And our next speaker is John Morris Brooks and Serena Collins. Give him some time. And if nothing is being done, you call me back. 
Well, I haven't called you back, but I thought I'd come here tonight because the issue of that park, it's in disrepair terribly. When I took a look at County Street Park, of which I have a picture, if I could show you, and the stark difference between County Street, that's as smooth as you could see. You could slide across it without being bruised. But I show you Mount Herman's playground or basketball court, and it is asphalt. Mount Vernon Avenue running from High Street to Port Norfolk is smoother than this court. So I come here today for the children of Mount Herman who'd like to play out there in that park and not be scarred up, scant up, bruised, damaged, rocks in the palm of their hands and their kneecaps. Am I passionate about this park? Yes, I grew up in this park. And I look at 60 years later, it's still the same. Wow. If County Street can look like this, like this, why do I talk look like that? Help the kids. I don't play ball anymore. But I do go after my rebound when I shoot sometime. And if I fall on that court, I'm going to get those locks in my hands too. Thank you. Thank you.
1057. That's my own. That's my number. Call me at that. If you want to, you know, look great, you can still look great. Stress free. I, I basically have myself, I can look stress free. I've, been, I've never been impressed my whole life because I've I always played. So, all right. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. This concludes our agenda. Our next council meeting is at 10 o'clock uh, on July the 30th. It's a Tuesday. It's 10 o'clock in the morning in this room when our economic consultant uh, will present a report, a report on their findings of uh, the viability of the casino in Portsmouth. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.